Hello and welcome to Turn Up The Volume, the podcast where we're amplifying the voices and stories that drive gender equity in the audio industry. I'm Nayo Anya, your host and audio equity champion from the Yorkshire Sound Women Network. Today, we're diving into the fifth strand of our Volume Up framework, progression and professional development. In an industry where stability can be elusive, especially for women and marginalised genders, we have a responsibility to create pathways for growth that are both accessible and sustainable. In this episode, we'll hear from four incredible women who have forged their own paths, overcome barriers, and are now helping others to do the same. We'll also touch on some key statistics that highlight the importance of these issues. Let's start with Isabel from Girls Twiddling Knobs, who shared one of her biggest wins, releasing her own music and creating a space where she could pass on her knowledge of music technology. I have independently released my music right from the beginning and it has amassed now nearly 30 million Spotify streams with no management, no record label, no publishing deal, no distribution deal, you know, none of that. All completely just off my own grit and taking a risk in my talent and just a lot of luck as well. So that's probably like the biggest external success. I think within that, though, is like my internal sense of reward or fulfillment from that, which is, uh, I guess, t- taking risks and taking the less trodden path and kind of always doing that. And I would say that goes for all the kind of careers that I've sort of straddled now including music, academia, and then now running a business, running an independent education business. So, yeah, taking risks, taking the less trodden path and always following my heart, I guess, and my gut. And I think this is where, for for women, this question of self-production, self-releasing, all of those skills are so important because it's been so empowering to be in those situations and be like, I understand how this recording and production process works. I will make certain decisions and I might decide to collaborate and even pass those decisions over to other people if I want to. But my actions and my decisions have some kind of impact in all of this. And that's really empowering rather than being put in a studio with somebody by a record company you know, to be produced by a man and for it to not really sound how you envisage it sounding and for you to not be able to do anything about it and then to potentially owe the money for the pleasure of that recording process happening, you know, that that's very disempowering. Whereas being able to make those decisions about how your music's made, why it's made and the end result and how that might show up in the world. I don't think that for me music tech ever felt like in any kind of clear way, oh yeah, this is my brain suits this. I don't think I, I felt a lot of kind of challenge there of imposter syndrome not necessarily naturally taking to especially some of the more kind of complex, abstract forms of music technology. Um What I did really relate to was sound, I think, and just being able to hear and listen and tune in and have a really instinctual understanding of sound, how how sound behaves and how I can craft it. And so I think that I found that the music technology, I, I could gravitate towards types of music technology that I felt able to do that with or, you know, was able to learn how to do that with. So there's definitely parts of music tech that I don't, like, I'm not a coder. I really struggled using things like Mac, Max MSP, that kind of stuff. Um, I love, you know, really detailed editing, mixing, sculpting sound in that way. Um, I really like working in the TAW, which not everyone does. I really do. And I really love working with environmental sound, soundscape composition and electroacoustic techniques and voice, you know, and I think that's the thing is that a lot of the stuff that I that I've vibed with music tech wise has been about that sonic texture. So it's not that I kind of saw sound or saw music tech as a like, oh, finally, I found somewhere that I just feel comfortable in at all. And I know there are other people that really have, you know, and it's 
especially things like coding, they're like, yeah, my brain just works like this. I, I do not have that at all. I'm very narrative driven. I've really struggled to read music in the way that I struggled to, um, at least when I was younger, read. And I definitely think there's a correlation there. And I'm sure someone has done a wonderful study on that. But for me, it was more about coming into an environment where it was about your ear rather than it being about abstract theory, which I know is not always the case, as in once you get deeper into music tech, then it can be frustrating that it's about gear and technique and makes and models and everyone's just, you know, like rolling off acronyms, like everyone knows what they're talking about. And again, that is not how my brain works, you know. But I think that because of that experience and because I'd kind of pushed through a lot of that to at least want to make the work I wanted to make with the, with technology. That probably is why I have made the courses I've made and why Girls Twiddling Knobs is what it is and has made the impact it has so far. It's because I understand what it feels like to come across music technology and it doesn't just feel like second nature instantly. And that I know there's many complex reasons for that, not just who you are as an individual, but the complex social culture that you are part of and that you've been exposed to. Isabel's journey into music tech and self-releasing her work is a powerful example of how creating your own space can lead to meaningful professional development. But as Laura from Saffron Records explains, this journey is not just about individual success. It's also about creating community and supporting one another along the way community is absolutely like it's in my body I can't wherever I go I'm like I, I I just need to create this community and this feeling and you know that sense of people feeling like they belong and they connect and so I think that is the pathway that I'm seeing you know now at the end of it and you know with Beyond the Mix my other company like that again is about that community and feeling the sense of belonging so I think at the heart of it, it's about community, but it's also about running alongside that, my want to belong. So it's about me finding that place for me. And when I find that place for me, I'm able to sort of implement that for the others that are coming. I don't want to say behind me, because but alongside, mm -hmm. like for my peers, for the next generations to be able to work out how to get that community, how to get that belonging, and then to be able to pass that to others. So I think that's the kind of pathway. I think for me, Bristol is it's a support system. It's a, you know, it's a community support system. And so, yeah, just being able to uplift those people that are within that space and to change, you know, what that space looks like as well so that actually everyone can feel a part of that. And even if it's not yet something that we see everywhere, even just feeling that with Saffron or with YSWN or with a organisation, just going, OK, this is how it can feel. So actually, this is what I can be striving for. This is the level of comfort and understanding and recognition that I can actually be searching for because I know that it can exist. Yeah, sound engineering was definitely, you know, that's where we needed to put our energy into. And I think maybe when you're first starting off in a business, there's something that, you know, in the traditional sense isn't selling then you would write that off. But for me, that was like, no, that's where we need to put even more energy into because otherwise that's where people really aren't getting seen. They're really not getting that chance to explore that as a potential, you know, in their careers. Being the first black-owned female-led label, yeah, just being in a space, being in the music tech industry and actually being one of those statistics we talk about the kind of the audio engineers, we talk about the producers, the DJs, but actually me trying to work in that space daily and, you know, confront some of those feelings and like that's a continual win. Um, and yeah, being on the power up, which I think, you know, that one was, it's a really important one for me because, that was around 2020, um, you know, with George Floyd, with Black Lives Matter, like that felt so important to 
not just have funding, but to really, really be able to feel connected and supported to other black people in the music industry. Like that feels like a kind of real legacy. Um, you know, I talk about my dyslexia regularly. I talk about the fact that I came out of school with three GCSEs, like those things have stayed with me. I don't feel in my body that I was meant to be successful because that's what they tell you at school if, if you don't do your GCSEs. So to be heard is one of the most empowering things. Laura's emphasis on community is so important, especially when we consider the challenges that come with success and what the word success can mean. Nali shared her thoughts on the fear of success and the need to keep moving forward even when the path seems a little uncertain. One thing that I used to say to myself all the time, which I still do now actually, is um, don't be afraid to succeed. I can't, I can't remember exactly where it came from, but uh, when I was younger, like, yeah, because I, re I really struggled with anxiety and stuff. I used to like write quotes and then stick them up on my walls so that I could like read them and be like, uh, <laughs> yeah, okay. And I think don't be afraid to succeed was one of the one of the main ones I think is stuck with me because I feel like I just wouldn't take opportunities and go places because I was just afraid and I think a lot of that comes from being afraid of like what happens if it is really good and then now I've got to live this life where I'm being a successful person like ah <laughs> <laughs> the pressure <laughs> yeah exactly yeah yeah because it's it, I think we always not always but I think the idea of there being a fear of failure is mm. quite prominent but actually there's also kind of a fear of success because a fear of success means more opportunities and more challenges and more being in your yep. stretch and more opportunity to fail if you're already being successful and and sometimes that can mean that we kind of play small when actually it's 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 always like you say if you take the chance you just go for it probably it'll be fun but yeah, I really, I really love that as a um, as a quote because I also think success means so many different things to different people, you know. And the win can be leaving the house; that can be the success. Exactly. Yeah, I'd say just go for it. <laughs> it there's going to be, you know, a lot of trial and error. I think um, not everything's going to work. Not everyone's going to like what you do. I think there's a lot of rejection that you have to face in this industry. But the main thing I guess that will I think nine times out of ten lead to success I guess is to just keep going and keep going and keep trying and keep persevering I think that's that's literally like <laughs> the the main thing that you need to be able to pursue a creative industry I think is that perseverance but also passion like you have to actually like what you're doing and enjoy it where do you find that that perseverance within yourself like if you're having a moment where you've tried and you've tried one avenue and you're just not really getting anywhere and you keep getting no's and you don't really know when the yeses are going to come how do you how do you get yourself through those moments uh, I just make music <laughs> uh it's kind of just what I do like I just really love making music uh, you know if I, if no one else is listening to it, I'm still going to make it anyway. Um, my mum says that I'm a very stubborn person. I think the older I've gotten, the more that I realise that's actually very true. <laughs> <laughs> very true, but also kind of a gift. Yeah. Because, you know, <laughs> if it's going to keep you doing it and it's going to be like, no, no, this is going to happen. I am going to make it work and it's going to be great. Yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> Progression isn't a straight line. Success can mean so many different things to so many different people. Sometimes we see it as something huge, but it doesn't have to be. It can be small. It's a constant process of overcoming obstacles, both internal and external. When we look at the different points at which women and minority gendered people start moving away from the sound and audio industry, there are clear times in which they stop engaging with music technology. One is when choosing music tech at secondary school, then when they go into college, and if they do make it into higher education, there is another drop off when transitioning from education into industry. Unfortunately, 
Then the statistics also show that many women leave the industry in their mid-40s, with female representation dropping from 53% in the 35 to 44 age category to just 33% in the 55 to 64 age bracket. This is a clear indication that more needs to be done to support women's long-term careers in music, starting from a much younger age. Additionally, more than one in 10 respondents, so 11.2%, in a UK music survey reported experiencing menopause or perimenopause, with nearly half of them, 47.5%, saying it affected their work. Yet three quarters of these individuals, 76.6%, did not take time off to manage their symptoms, highlighting a significant gap in support for women at this stage of their careers. This was the first time that menopause was even looked at in a survey. And many women reported that they feared the repercussions if they did take time off to manage their symptoms. These statistics illustrate the importance of creating supportive environments where progression and professional development are accessible to everyone, regardless of age or gender. As one female musician in the Musician's Census Financial Insight report noted, music does not provide a stable income, and so progression is often slowed by needing to spend time on other work to make a living. This lack of financial stability can be a significant barrier to progression, particularly for women who may already face additional challenges. If you haven't listened to it already, our last episode looks specifically at pay and the gender pay gap. So it's pretty clear that supporting progression and professional development is not just about creating opportunities. It's about sustaining careers. If we want to see more women and marginalised genders thriving in the audio industry, we need to commit to creating spaces where they can grow, learn and succeed over the long term. And take into account the other things that may be affecting them societally, whether that be becoming parents or caregivers or going through hormonal differences, like the menopause or perimenopause. This step in the Volume Up framework is so important and can often be overshadowed by recruitment. It is vital to support the progression and professional development of people we are inviting into our spaces, as well as those who have been with us on a long-term basis. And there's so many ways that we can take action to do that. One thing that we recommend in our Volume Up standards is that when you're looking at supporting progression and professional development during this strand, you think about offering paid internships or apprenticeships or trainee opportunities that can help new talent to get their start. You can also organise open days or workshops to engage with specific groups and provide them with skills and knowledge they need to advance. Or you can talk to women and minority gendered people already in your circle and ask them where they want to go and how you can help them to progress there. We've put together the Volume Up framework to support audio and sound organisations in becoming gender equitable. And we're here to guide you every step of the way. With Turn Up the Volume, we're not just sharing stories. We're celebrating the incredible achievements of women in this industry. Something that statistics show women do less often. In fact, research highlights that women are less likely to self-promote their successes compared to their male counterparts which is why it's so important to create opportunities for them to do so. So, let's keep turning up the volume on these conversations, celebrating the milestones, and pushing for a more inclusive and supportive industry. Sign up to the Volume Up Standard today and commit to creating opportunities for everyone to succeed. We'll be here as your critical friend and your cheerleader to help you along this journey find out more about progression and development by checking out the UK Music Survey Report and the Musician Census Financial Insight Report. In the next episode, we'll be looking at strand number six, recruitment. But not just recruitment, also retainment. It's not just about how we bring people in. It's also about how we make sure they stay. Thank you to all our incredible guests, Laura from Saffron Records, Silo from Music Production for Women, 
Isabel from Girls Twiddling Knobs and Gnarly. Make sure to go and give them a follow on all their social medias and support the great work they do to continue pushing for gender equity. Thank you also to Rosa UK, a grant-making charity that funds women's and girls' organisations working to make the UK a fairer, safer place, without whom we wouldn't have been able to create this podcast. I'm Nayo Anya, your podcast host, scripter and director and audio equity champion at YSWN. Thank you to our editor, Joe Kennedy, and Sarah Statham, who has provided the music, both of whom are YSWN associates. To find out more about what we do, head to our website, www.yorkshiresoundwomen.com. See you next time.